Remember that the parent function is y equals x squared. Today we are going to look at what happens when we put parentheses around that x squared and then add or subtract a number in there. And we already made the guess that since we've talked about moving up and down already, it's probably going to mean we're moving side to side. So in example one, how many units side to side do you think this is going to move? We think it's going to move four to the left. That kind of makes sense. It says minus four, four to the left. So let's get out our graphing calculators and let's see what actually happens. Okay, so once you get it entered, you do need the parentheses exactly as it looks on the paper. Put it in exactly that way on your calculator. Push the graph button and what we thought it was going to move to the left. Why the heck did it move to the right? Okay, this is why we do side to side last. Because it's weird. It's backwards. If it says minus 4, look what happened. It moved it to the right to where the x values are positive. So what do you suppose would happen if it was a plus 4? It would move it to the left. So this happens because this formula, it actually says x minus h. So it, it does the opposite. Um, I've told students in the past, inside the parentheses is like crazy town, backwardsville, opposite, whatever. Anything that happens inside the parentheses is the opposite of what's actually happening on the graph. So this moves, and we're supposed to say how this compares. So we can write in here that it shifts right four. Oops. All right, now over on the side of your paper next to the graph, I would like you to write line of symmetry. We know that parabolas are symmetrical. There's a symmetry line straight down through the middle. So I want you to look at this graph and look at where that symmetry line is. Because we're moving side to side, the symmetry line is moving away from zero. Now our symmetry line is at four. The line of symmetry is x equals four. This is going to help us in figuring out which points from our table to write down and graph. Because we want a couple points left of the symmetry line and a couple points to the right of the symmetry line. So you have to know where that symmetry line is. So go to your table. How do you go to the table? Second graph. Because our symmetry line is at four, we need to move this table until we can see an x value of four. So use your up or down arrows to find four. Okay, so I found four on my calculator, and then I went a couple of points past four. Okay, our line of symmetry is at four, so I'm going to write, why is this doing this? This is really annoying me. Okay, notice I did not write four on the first line of my table. I wrote it in the third row of my table. Because 4 is the symmetry line, so that point 4, 0, that's the vertex. That's where the parabola is going to change directions. I want a couple of points to the left of that and a couple of points to the right of that. So I put this down here. We can call this like the turning point or the vertex. And then using the table, above 4, 0, we have the point 3, 1. And above that, we have the point 2, 4. Below on the table, we have the points 5, 1, and 6, 4. Do you see the symmetry in our y values? 
41014. You want to see that symmetry because that means we're going to see both sides of that parabola. Okay? So the symmetry line is really important because that symmetry line tells you where you need to go to in this table so you can get points that are on both sides of that symmetry line. All right, so now take a moment, plot those points, and then connect the graph so it looks like what it does in your calculator. And remember, when you're connecting your points, you can push the graph button again and look at your graph and make sure that your graph on your paper looks like it does in the calculator. In example one, it said minus four, and it shifted to the right four units. So now in example two, it says plus five. What do you think is going to happen when it says plus five? It's going to move left five. So anything that happens inside those parentheses is backwards. So if it says plus five, it's actually going to move to the left five. So go to your calculator. And the nice thing about these is you might just be able to replace the minus four with a plus five and not have to retype everything. And let's see what happens. It moved left five. On your paper, I would like you to write symmetry line at x equals negative 5. That symmetry line shifted over to the left where the x values are negative. By thinking about where your symmetry line is and writing that down on your paper, it's going to help you think about where you need to go in the table to find the points that you need. So now, second graph, go to your table. When you push the table button, it's going to take you wherever you previously were. So you're going to have to move this up and down. So now we need to go to negative 5. So I'm going to push the up arrow to go to negative 5. And then I'll just do a couple clicks after negative 5. Negative 5 is where our symmetry line is. So negative 5, 0 is going to be our vertex. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight that as well. I'm going to highlight everything that has to do with that plus 5. I need a couple of points on either side of negative 5. So in your table, a couple points above negative 5, a couple points below negative 5. And hopefully you can see the symmetry in your y values. Plot the points and connect them so it looks like your calculator. And because the EOC is going to ask you to analyze, I am going to try to ask you as much as possible to analyze so that when the EOC comes, this is just super easy. What is the role of H in the formula y equals a times x minus h? H tells the graph to move right or left. And let's even write in here, if it says plus a number, so if it says plus h, backwards of plus is negative, so it moves left. And if it says minus h, it moves right. The next question is, what is the role of a? <laughs> Do you remember from the very first thing we did when we came back from break? That A value tells us how wide or how narrow 
And if the A value is negative, it tells us that the graph opens down. So A controls how wide or how narrow and whether it opens up or down. In example three, the two in front of the parentheses is going to make the graph more narrow. The minus three is going to move it three to the right. Put this into your calculator using those parentheses. And you all are going to get really annoyed by me, but I'm going to keep telling you where is the symmetry line. It moved three units to the right, so the symmetry line is x equals positive 3. So positive 3 is where you need to find in your table to get points that are on both sides of that symmetry line. Because 3 is my symmetry line, I'm writing it on the third row so that I can definitely have two points on each side of my symmetry line. And I highlighted everything that has to do with that 3 in the equation. And I'm hoping that when you get to 3 in the table, you'll start to see the symmetry on the Y column. So I'm going to use the points 3, 0. <coughs> Once you have example three graphed, I want you to look at example four and try it on your own. Couple things to think about. What is negative one fourth going to do to your graph? What is the plus two going to do to your graph? See if you can guess, write it down, then graph it. Don't forget to write down where your symmetry line is. So after you've graphed it on your calculator, write down where the symmetry line is because that helps you with where do you need to go on the table. Okay, in your calculator, when you enter negative one-fourth, you should use parentheses. So parentheses, negative one divided by fourth, close your parentheses, and then the parentheses that have the x plus two. This is shifted left two. It opens down and it's wider. Your symmetry line is at negative 2, so when we go to the table, we are looking for an x value of negative 2. So I find negative 2, and then I go a couple beyond that. Now here's the problem. Because it's a fraction, we've got decimals in here, and I don't really want to graph decimals. So up from negative 2, 0, I think the next one that's whole numbers is negative 4, negative 1. And I'm going to keep going up until I see negative 6, negative 4. On the other side of negative 2, we've got 0, negative 1, and let's get one more, 2, negative 4. 